And then down goes Chris Godwin on a tackle from Roquan Smith. And and it when it happened, I didn't realize how bad it was. I thought maybe he like got like hit in a kidney or something. Out came the vacuum splint on the cart, dislocated ankle. And it just makes the loss a lot worse. Mike Evans left early with an aggravated hamstring injury. And then Godwin, who knows how much time he's going to miss. Dislocated ankle doesn't sound good. It's going to do damage to the ligaments on the way out, on the way back in. It's just it, mm-hmm. it, anytime you put the vacuum splint on the leg, it's not good. And and there's going to be questions for the Bucks and Todd Bowles as to as to why he and the rest of the starting offense were out there. It, it was definitely tough to see. And, and only thing I can think of is when you're on a team and I think you kind of develop this mindset of we're going to continue to fight, we're going to continue to play. And I think I think it's a Todd Bowles mindset. I think he has that. We're just going to keep going. I don't think he's even probably thinking about getting these guys out of the game. And honestly, I think those guys are probably, you know, they have the attitude, I want to keep going, I want to keep playing. So it was really tough to watch. And what really was tough to me when you saw Godwin go down uh, watching the game, you see him go down and it, it looked like he gets rolled up on a little bit. And then Kyle Hamilton walks over to check on him. And when he walks over, he looks down and he starts shaking his head and he turns away fast. And right at that moment, I knew it was something really bad for Godwin because I've seen that before, whether it's watching a basketball game and, and you see a guy go down and you see players get over there and they just turn their head right away. I've seen it a ton of times being on the field uh, as a football player. So as soon as I saw that, I knew it was bad news for Godwin. And for this team now to walk away, you come into a Monday night game, a big game against you know the Baltimore Ravens, and to say, all right, we're going to lose by 10 is one thing, but to say we're going to lose Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in the same game, that kind of jeopardizes your season and everything you've built. And, you know, talking to some of the, the Tampa Bay players and coaches, they were talking about how happy they were with the progress of this team going into the game. They like where they're at. Baker Mayfield, their leader, had the way he kind of brings the energy every single day has made everybody feel like, hey, we're all even ground. We all got to bring our lunchbox and go to work every single day. So to see them have to take these hits last night, it was it was really tough to watch. Yeah, I thought the Bucs were going to win the game. I thought they were rounding into something special, taking on the personality of Baker Mayfield. I talked to Chris Goblin about that after the 51-27 win over the Saints. And I and I I had faith that it was just one of those one of those nights where, you know, first home game back since the second hurricane. You get all the different vibes that could maybe lift a team and and they had they had a surprise in store, and it looked that way at first. Like you said, you know, the back-to-back sacks of Lamar Jackson. He'd only been sacked seven times all season before that moment. And I thought maybe they got something. And then by by uh, the end of the game, it was clear they didn't. And they didn't give up uh, maybe when they should have. Here's Todd Bowles, coach of the Buccaneers, after the game, explaining why Chris Godwin was still playing. He's a player. We're trying to win the ball game. I mean, we were still down 10. We're trying to get extra points and kick another onside kick. It just happened. With what Mike going down, we didn't have that many receivers left as it was, so we play what we got. Isn't that even more, perhaps, important to, to preserve Chris for the Falcons and Mike's possibly not going to play? Well, you can say that because he got hurt. Uh, we don't second guess. We got our guys. We're playing everybody we got. It's unfortunate he got hurt. We feel bad about that. But he's a football player, and he wants to be in the game, just like Baker and everybody else wants to be in the game. Don't you have an obligation to protect your players from themselves? I do protect my players all the time. That has nothing to do with why we left them in the ball game. We still had a shot to score some points and win the ball game. It happened. It happens in football. Look, the, the the explanation and the difference would be if you put in the backup quarterback and you just run the ball and, and just concede, right? They wanted to try, as slim as the chance might have been, they wanted to try to do the unthinkable. There was a game 22 years ago between the Colts and the Bucks where there was an avalanche of points at the end. Like, crazy stuff happens. Crazy stuff can happen. Lightning can't hit 
the milk bottle unless you put the milk bottle out in the street. And, you know, that's what they were doing. I get it. I get it. And I I, I think Bowles should have been a little more firm because he, he invites more scrutiny by saying, well, you know, he wants to play. It isn't about him wanting to play. This is about whether or not it makes strategic sense to get your starters out of the game or to leave them in and try to score. That's it. That's the choice. We still thought we had a chance to win. It's not, well, he wants to play football. No, we thought we had a chance to win. If we don't think we have a chance to win, okay. We get Baker Mayfield out of there. We get Chris Godwin out of there. We get Mm -hmm. other starters out of there. We thought there was still a chance, slim as it might have been, and we weren't ready to concede. That's all he should say. Because once you start down this other path, it gets a little twisted. Just say, we thought we still had a chance, even though it was a slim chance. We're not going to surrender in a moment like that because stranger things have happened. I agree with you. And I, and I think it's easy from the outside looking in when you watch somebody get hurt to say, get everybody out. And it's the same thing we we talk about when we talk about the preseason. Those games don't matter. Why is this guy in? We say that as soon as a guy gets hurt. Season starts, we're like, hey, this team looks rusty, and not ready to go because they didn't play in the preseason. So you have all these different reasons of why guys shouldn't be in the game. But again, I think it goes back to who you are as a coach and who you are as a team. And Bulls, I think, is one of those guys that's cut from, we're going to keep going as long as there's time on the clock. And mathematically, there's a way I feel like we can win. We're going to keep doing that. And I think that's what they did last night. I don't think you saw any of those players not playing with, you know, unbelievable effort. Cade Otten has so many big catches at the end of the game. He took some big shots from different players. He got up, ran the ball to the middle of the field, handed it to the official, lined back up. So when you look at that team, they were all all playing still with an edge. Liam Cohn was still drawing up plays as the offensive coordinator to go down there and try to score fast. So I just think that's who Tampa is. And I agree with you from the optics. And and when you got to go in front of the media and talk, I think Bulls should stand firm in that and say, hey, this is who we are. Injuries are a part of the game. We don't want those injuries. We do try to avoid those injuries because I don't I don't love and I understand the question, but when you say, hey, it's your job to protect your players, I do. I think coaches go above and beyond when they're drawing up practice schedules, how they're conditioning their team. What are they doing days on, days off? Like that's all a part of protecting your team. And I'm sure he does that. And in this moment, you lose a guy, but injuries are part of the game. So There's definitely an argument for getting those guys out of the game if that's what you do. But I think Tampa and Bulls, who they are is they want to keep going as long as there's time left. And you live with those consequences sometimes, but you got to just take it. And there is an irony to that, if I'm using the word correctly, and I never know if I am. Their season ended in 2023 in Detroit. After they failed to take their timeouts when the Lions were mismanaging the clock horribly and giving them an opportunity to get the ball back down eight. So (laughs) something changed apparently for Todd Bowles. Maybe the lesson learned out of that Lions playoff loss was we're never conceding. We're never surrendering. Even if there's only one second on the clock, we're never going to cry uncle. I don't know, but it is quite a disparity because they did. They did just blow that. They did. And you're talking about who's in the coach's ear in moments of clock management and potential analytics. That one to me, and I'd forgotten about it. MDS just reminded me of it on our PFT writer's text thread. This is why multitasking sometimes is useful. I get ideas that I wouldn't have otherwise had. Somebody blew it then. Somebody clearly blew it then. And maybe the aftermath of that was this commitment to we are never under any circumstances going to surrender. We're never not going to call our timeouts. We're never not going to keep pushing. And as slim as the chance might be, like I said earlier, lightning can't hit the milk bottle unless the milk bottle's out in the street. We're going to leave that milk bottle out in the street as long as we can. And I I think about that point that you just made, and then you take the point of, Baltimore had been struggling to hold the lead. So I think you put all those things together for Todd Bowles on that sideline. He's like, hey, we watched the Cowboys come back when it looked like the game was over, and they gave themselves a shot at the end of the game to possibly win. 
And then you look at what you, you know, what you just said of not finishing the season the way you want to finish the season. I think that all stays fresh in the coach's mind, but also the players. I'm sure he spoke about that, whether it was in the off season or, you know, at some point during this season of, Hey, we're never out of the fight. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, Hey, injuries happen. This is a really tough break for Tampa Bay, but sometimes who you are, your mentality continues to push you forward. And maybe we see Trey Palmer or McMillan step up and make some plays in this season because of how they play and what they think. Well, and we've seen a couple of receiver trades in the last week. Other teams are potentially looking around at available receivers elsewhere. Mike Williams of the Jets, DeAndre Hopkins. There's some talk that maybe he'll be available. There may be other options. There aren't a whole lot of free agents unless they want to bring back Julio Jones or take a shot at at uh, Michael Thomas, who has gotten zero sniffs since he was released by the Saints earlier this year. But, you know, it's changing a tire on a moving car, especially to plug a receiver into a new offense. And they may have to consider that. Because to Evans, I, I don't know why Evans was playing. As as easily as that hamstring injury got aggravated, you, you I'm sure you've had a hamstring pull at some point in your life. And if you haven't, God love you. I've had one. And – you just have to shut it down for weeks. And when you think it's healed, it's still not healed. Cause when you go to top speed, it's going to grab again. And he's going to top speed, trying to make that touchdown catch. And there it went hit, you know, he got hit going down, but I, I just, you're taking a very, very calculated risk. And it may not even be all that calculated when you try to push through a tight hamstring. Cause you, you're going to at some point exert it chances are to the level where it's going to go and it's going to go from a hamstring strain to a hamstring tear. And you can tell right there, usually when you watch these plays, you see a guy like overstride or kind of miss his step. And you could tell right there, he just leaned out to make the catch. And when you put the reach and the extension together and then the, the pain he was in it, I think that is the thing that when you look at it as a guy who's pulled his hamstring before, when you kind of just pull it, it, you know, you feel it right away. You kind of pull up and you're like, ah, like, hey, you usually come to the sideline and say, hey, I definitely did something to my hamstring. But he kind of grabbed that thing and rolled around. It looked really painful, which makes you think that, that there's going to be some time where he has to sit down. And the problem is, like you said, once it goes, now coming back gets a lot harder. Even if you wait four weeks, you wait a month, it's still like, is it there yet? Is it going to pull again? Like, now, it's going to be really shaky kind of grounds, I think, for Mike Evans going forward. And he's not, you know, some young guy in year three or four. You know, his stats and his sustained success and, and stability he brings to this team. It might take a while to get him back on the field. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. And it reminds me of the first time I ever pulled a hamstring. It almost feels like you got Charlie horsed. You know, it's just like like somebody's knee went into your leg and it's like, ah, ah. And then you feel a little tight. But when it's when it causes that kind of agony, there there's an issue and it's going to take even more time. And you think it's healed and you still need to give it more time because you think it's healed at, you know, normal running. You're not factoring in all out, pushing it to the limit because that's when it potentially injures again. So that's a problem for the Bucks. They're they're going to be without their two starting wideouts probably for a while now and they're going to have to figure out how to proceed with that in mind. They may just have to morph into a running team. They've got those three great tailbacks. They may just have to go Rashad White, Bucky Irving and Sean Tucker all day long. Pull out the single wing. Get the, get get one of the old Belichick uh, playbooks from his archives at the Naval Academy and and use that. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.